Thank you for choosing Access On Demand. We're the fastest growing home health technology company, helping improve care for more than 1.5 million patients and trusted by more than 7,000 healthcare organizations to grow their business. Access is a firm believer in continuing training and we create content so you can learn and grow anywhere, anytime. Let's get started. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for this live webinar to help prepare you and your team for upcoming changes associated with the implementation of patient-driven groupings model, PDGM. Today, we will provide you with these best practices to succeed. Eight constants of change required to move your organization from PPS to PDGM, ideas to mitigate the risks of change, and a plan for changes to address new PDGM requirements. My name is Stephanie People. I'm the Director of Brand Marketing for Access. Before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about Access. We are the fastest growing home healthcare technology company, providing solutions that improve care for more than 2 million patients nationwide and are trusted by more than 7,000 organizations. We offer a complete suite of easy to use, innovative software solutions that empower home health, home care, and hospice providers to grow their business while making lives better. Our collaborative culture is focused on innovation and excellence, and we're recognized nationally as a best place to work. Today, you will hear from our industry expert, Carrie Jo Howard. Carrie Jo is the Vice President of Client Services here at AXA. She oversees all aspects of client engagement, including product implementation, client support, and account management to provide the best possible client experience. She has more than a decade of client experience and implementation experience in the home health care industry and has led and managed several change management implementation efforts throughout her career. So just before we get started, a couple of quick housekeeping items. Everyone's phones are muted. However, you may submit questions throughout the webinar. If time permits, Carrie Jo will answer as many questions as she can at the end of the webinar. If we don't have time to answer your question, we will follow up with you following the webinar today and we will provide everyone with a link to the slides and a post and post the video recording of this webinar on access.com. With that, we'll kick it off with Carrie Jo. Okay, thank you, Steph. Thank you everyone for joining us this morning. Good morning. Um, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules to join this webinar. Uh, talking about change management is definitely something that um, I'm passionate about, so I'm excited to be able to share that with you guys today. So our agenda, so you guys know what to expect in this presentation. So we will touch on the PDGM basics, just a high level overview of what's coming and what you can expect. Um, and then talk about specifically what is change management. There's a lot of definitions out there um, that you know describe change management in different ways, but let's kind of dig deeper into that to understand really what change management is. Why is it so important? The um, and also the risks of ignoring change management as a whole. And then we'll go over the eight constants of change. So overall, we're hoping to assist you in identifying specific opportunities with PDGM to elevate your overall change management efforts as we go through um, this change that CMS has put into place. So PDGM basics. So if you look at this slide, um, on the left, you've obviously got our current payment model, PPS. And then on the right, um, this graphic, which I'm sure some of you have already seen, um, shows um, what to expect with PDGM. So even just looking at them, PDGM um, is obviously a very complex payment model. So it's important that we understand every aspect of it. Um, as you guys know, it's the most significant change to Medicare's payment method since the implementation of PPS almost 20 years ago. It represents real, real potential for improved revenue for some organizations, but at the same time, it may be the demise of others. So some PDGM basics that I just wanna highlight. Um, we have our 30-day payment unit. So of course, you still have your 60-day episode, but within that episode, you'll have two separate day, 30-day payments. Episode timing of early or late. PDGM has admission sources of community or institutional. PDGM provides comorbidity adjustment codes with secondary diagnoses. Your therapy level domain is eliminated and it has it establishes 432 payment groups within 12 clinical groupings. 
And then as you guys all know, uh, PDGM is set to go into effect on January 1st of 2020. So let's talk about what is change management. So like I mentioned earlier, I think there's a, a lot of different definitions of change management out there. This is the one that I think resonates the best and really kind of describes the point of change management. It's any approach taken to drive business results by getting individuals and groups ready, willing, and able to implement and sustain new ways of working. So with PDGM, many organizations will have to change the way they run their daily operations. This is gonna require the use of this ad card model that you see here. It represents five tangible and concrete outcomes that people need to achieve for lasting change. So the first being awareness of the change, desire to support and take part in that change, knowledge of how to change, ability to implement the change, and reinforcement to sustain that change as a whole. So essentially what you're doing is driving behavior of all those that are affected by the change within your organization. So what is your version of the change? So today, as in how do we define our approach now or what do we do today? And then of course your tomorrow or what is the vision? And it's really important that within your organization, you deliver both messages here. So you have to highlight what's working well in your current state but also communicate the threat of not changing since it will support your vision in the long run. We recommend performing a PDGM risk impact analysis to assist you in determining all of your areas at risk. You also must ensure that there's consistency in how all of your team members are defining the tomorrow or what your vision actually looks like. And that transition in between today and tomorrow is always gonna be uncertain and uncomfortable. And while we're in early 2019, and I'd say most of us currently reside in the uncertain and uncomfortable realm of what's to come with PDGM, but we will all get there with the help of proper change management efforts. Let's talk about some of the costs of ignoring change management. Um, you have some, on the slide, you'll see some direct and indirect with short-term and long-term costs. So short-term and direct being a lot of resources wasted, business objectives not being met, long-term and direct, your strategies not being accomplished, short-term and indirect, your morale internally would suffer. It could have a negative impact on your culture as a whole. Job security could be threatened. And then your long-term and indirect costs, uh, lower confidence, resistance increases, and your next change initiative um, is more likely to fail. So with PDGM, you know, we've been made aware of this change and given time to prepare. To, to not prepare for this is going to produce reactive, unplanned change, which is going to result in direct and indirect costs to the business. While preliminary projections indicate that PDGM will result in a positive outcome for some providers, no agency is provided any certainty. Every provider, regardless of how they are projected to perform, will be required to adapt to a multitude of new competencies, such as workflows, payment regulations, PDGM success is not guaranteed, which is why proper, timely, and effective change management is so important. However, the reality, of course, is that projects struggle and fail all the time. Sorry. Um, your biggest barriers to success are always going to be your people factors. So, for example, you're changing mindsets and attitudes um, of the people that work for you. So, it's inevitable that resistance is going to come along with that. Uh, your, your culture as a whole um, and what kind of environment you currently have in your organization and then lack of senior management support is also a big people barrier. Your organization's ability to manage change is a necessary skill in our fast-paced, ever-changing competitive industry. So now we're going to jump into the eight constants of change. If your organizations want to make effective change, whether it's preparing everyone for PDGM, or any other alter, alteration to your business, you need to recognize and deal with these eight constants, or in other words, the eight fundamental truths about change. Um, these eight constants cannot be avoided, but you can work with them, mitigate their impact, and use them to your advantage throughout your project. So constant number one, it takes a village to change an organization, and organizations will only change when the people within them change. So the entire village has to be included, not just the chief, not just the elders, but your entire village. 
because in its purest form, an organization really is just a bunch of people. Of course, you've got our processes, our systems, our rules that unite us into specific groups and teams, but it really just comes down to the people within those teams. Your CEO can't declare change will just happen, but an organization can't really change until the people within it change. So for PDGM specifically, you must consider how change is going to impact various roles within your organization. For example, nurses may be asked to perform rehab skill sets as a complement to therapy visits, or your intake team may need to police referral documents for PDGM accepting codes. There's a solid chance that you'll have to work with your referral sources on gathering correct information to ensure that your intake staff is able to pull the appropriate codes from that information. And then organizations often make change an event, an event and describe it in more finite terms, such as a go live date. Um, we do this internally whenever we're rolling out um, clients onto our platform. We always define it in terms of a go live. But the change doesn't really happen until employees go through their own personal transition. For every individual, change is a, is a journey, not a destination or a date. The journey of transitioning to PDGM is going to take you through all of 2019 and even well after it goes into effect. The complex change that, that are required for the conversion to 30-day billing cycles while also maintaining value-driven care and the relatively new COPs is absolutely no small feat for any of us. You can't wait for January 1st. Constant number two, an object at rest tends to stay at rest. Uh, resistance is inevitable, and there's a multitude of reasons why people resist change, but you can absolutely prepare for every single one of them. So you can classify reasons for resistance into three separate buckets. You've got structural, personal, and physiological. So structural reasons, meaning you've got limited resources, or your people might be saying, we do not have enough people to accomplish this. Insufficient training, um, as in, I don't, I don't know how to do this. And a siloed mentality. In preparing for PDGM, agencies should really consider and evaluate all current partnerships for coding, electronic referral platforms, professional services, billing and revenue cycle management, and all software vendors. The second reason for resistance pertains to personal reasons. So uh, for your people, they might have fear of the unknown, as in what does my future at this company look like now? They might feel threatened, thinking my job might be eliminated. Or they could just take the ignoring approach, thinking it will just go away. But as we all know, PDGM is not going to go away. And then also habits. According to research done by Duke University, more than 40% of our actions are just unconscious habits. Therefore, you can't just order people to change because that's just now, that's just not how our brain works. And lastly, you've got uh, physiological reasons. So when you're going through a change, the effort that that requires essentially makes your brain work harder. And physically, your people will be more exhausted as they're working through these changes within your organization. So it's important to recognize that. Resistance is inevitable, but it's not all bad. Resistance means that your people are gaining the knowledge they need to get to a state of desire for the change you're trying to implement. Constant number three, older trees have deeper roots. So organizations can often be like old trees, rooted in tradition in the same spot and status quo. Commitment to the past can pose a threat and hinder your change in the future. So there are really three forces that help determine how deep-rooted an organization really is. That first force is perception. So we've all heard the, my perception is my reality. So with your people, if they believe it to be true because it's their perception, then it is true in their minds. If employees perceive that nothing is wrong, then nothing is going to change. To fight this, you have to make sure that you have an articulated vision, a description of all future opportunities, and a description of consequences, or as I mentioned earlier, the threat of not changing, PDGM may prove to be an opportunity to look at nurses that don't necessarily have a long tenure in um, the home health industry, but these nurses actually might adapt better to change. Recruiting efforts should definitely be evaluated. The second force is your organization's track record of change in the past. So maybe nothing new has been introduced or changed in a really long time within your business, or maybe change has been tried in the past and was unsuccessful. Or maybe several initiatives have been introduced and have been fairly successful. 
So it's important to understand your starting point and your employee's perception of change within your specific um, organization before you begin this effort for PDGM. The final force is culture. So your current culture can hinder or support the change. Some characteristics of a culture that may help your efforts include one that is collaborative in nature. Um, there's a lot of trust in all levels of your management team. You have an action-oriented environment. Your people are open-minded open -minded and innovative. And there's consistent beliefs and values. So you have a well-defined and known vision and mission. Characteristics that can hinder your change effort include the opposite of everything I mentioned above, but then also analysis paralysis, um, as in spending too much time in the weeds or the details of the change, um, valuing status quo and having a vested interest in maintaining it. So you just have a lot of uh, leaders or people on your teams that just do not want change because they believe their way that they're doing it today is the best way. And then inwardly focused and closed-minded. So for PDGM, a really good first step is to evaluate your current culture and really understand what improvements, if any, need to be made there. Constant number four is get to the heart of it. Individually and as a group, people are not rational beings. When considering change, there's an emotional connection that's necessary for people to commit to new ways of working. Connecting to people's head and heart builds the commitment you need to adopt change. So connecting emotionally in the workplace doesn't mean hugs and coddling. It means helping your people develop a belief and a mindset that will drive the behaviors the organization requires. Building credibility, framing goals, and using appropriate reinforcements will set the foundation to connect emotionally with your people. I know all of you have probably heard of WIFM or What's In It For Me. So of course your people will want to know how your organization will benefit from the change, but when the rubber meets the road, it really is all just about what's in it for them specifically as individuals. Appealing to their heart should take into consideration what it means for every single individual on your team. You have to communicate what you know when you know it, even when it comes to negative changes or job loss that might come as a result of some of the changes you're making. So transparency is extremely key. PDGM actually poses a real, a real opportunity to appeal to the hearts of why nurses likely even became nurses. The underserved are gonna get the care that they so desperately need. These uh, include wound, wound care patients, dual eligible patients, those that recently discharged from the hospital, and patients who are bed bound. So it really is just all about how you communicate PDGM. If, if you communicate it as a negative or just another thing that CMS is imposing on our industry, then it will be perceived negative right out of the gate by your people. So you have to control that message and ensure that overall you're providing a positive outlook right out of the gate. Constant number five is beware the paparazzi. So in any organization, and employees are considered the paparazzi. So people are always going to watch what leaders say and do and then filter that information to determine if they will support a change or not. So talking the talk is useless, useless if walking the walk doesn't immediately follow that. So a leader's actions are always gonna speak louder than their words. So there are really two critical elements of leadership. You have alignment and visible sponsorship. Alignment meaning leaders must be on the same page about the change, why it's important and what it will mean to the organization. So they all have to be communicating the same vision and mission. Visible sponsorship, meaning what are leaders actually doing to demonstrate their support for the change, such as contributing resources, attending key meetings, and then also encouraging others to work with the project team. Some of the best leadership happens in small actions, not necessarily in large group meetings or town halls. For example, hallway conversations and passing, or even just posture and facial expressions during meetings about the change. Being enthusiastic about it in every possible setting it's so important. Leaders should communicate about the change by identifying and telling people how the new vision guides their group's work and have several follow-up conversations one-on-one -on -one and in groups. You have to reward people for doing the right thing by encouraging people to get involved in pro project activities such as process reviews, focus groups, etc. And you have to reward people's involvement in the change with public recognition. 
When projects compete for time and resources, you have to discuss them openly with your team and figure out how to effectively maintain the support for the change's success. As we talked about earlier, going through change can exhaust your people. Recognize that and allocate appropriate resources. Expect a learning curve and a productivity dip while changes are put into place. Be patient and maintain a positive outlook even if the messages are negative and sometimes they just will be. The bottom line is that leading change requires the very best of every leader within your organization. As I mentioned in the last constant, we can't communicate PDGM as just another rule that CMS is imposing on our industry. Leaders have to avoid that negative atmosphere and control the message around PDGM to their people. Constant number six is you can say that again. So effective communication during organizational change takes work, patience, and most of all, courage. It's worth it, and it's a key element in any successful organizational change. People naturally tend to equate uncertainty with a negative outcome, so a communication plan is an integral part of any successful change process. You have to identify stakeholders, each of their specific concerns, what method of communication is used and how often it's communicated are all parts of a successful communication plan. It's not just about what is said, but who says it. So it's important to plan everything out prior to communication plan, prior to communicating. Make sure that you repeat it and repeat it and repeat it again. Managers and leaders need to be honest. You have to take risks and engage your audience. They need to listen and respond and they need to do this over and over again until the message gets through. Have your teams demonstrate PDGM training and do assessments afterwards to ensure they're listening. You have to make it simple. The way you say it matters. Ask them how they heard it and have them teach it back to you so they can communicate the right, right message to your peers. It's another way for you to own that message that they're, they're relaying to their team. Constant number seven is if they build it, they will come. So true learning, uh, Commitment and understanding comes from involvement and hands-on participation. The more that people are involved in the change that you're trying to implement, the less negative their inevitable rea reaction will be. People will naturally support what they help create. So pay me now or pay me later, meaning you do the work ahead of time and take the time up front to get your people on board. So for example, um, in my personal life, I have a, a younger daughter um, who's a picky eater, and she has the palate of a kindergartner, which is chicken nuggets and mac and cheese for every meal. But we found that if we take her to the grocery store with us, allow her to pick out every piece of her, her dinner, and then take her home and make it with her, um, and then she eats it, while this might test our patients quite a bit, it really allows her to have a say in what she's doing and what she's eating, and she's trying new things as a result. So the same concept applies in the workplace. As a, a proactive involvement strategy often slows things down in the beginning, but it really helps build commitment necessary for success of any change management effort. If a process needs to be changed, ask the people currently doing the work to suggest those changes. If a new strategy needs to be implemented, recruit those who will be impacted most to help plan. A change effort is not going to succeed if it's perceived to be a one-man show or an effort of a select few. Not everyone needs to be involved, but don't ignore any of your key players. Letting your stakeholders make some of the decisions helps transfer ownership from the project to them and their teams. Identify PDGM champions and involve them wherever needed. Let your staff identify opportunities such as creating PDGM work groups to look at areas like telemonitoring, episode management, intake, and 30-day visit utilization. Constant number eight is you're not in Kansas anymore. So this is the eighth and final constant. Without properly supporting and reinforcing new behaviors, people are, people are going to naturally revert back to their old ways of working. Sustaining change um, takes support and reinforcement from all levels of the organization. The right infrastructure will reinforce your new behaviors. You have questions that will, new questions that will need to be asked such as, how do we recruit and hire? How do we train? How do we evaluate and compensate our people? And how do we recognize all should be asked? People are going to naturally pay attention to what's evaluated and rewarded. 
if we ask people to do new work and new ways of doing that work, but continue to measure and reward on the old metrics, do not be surprised if everyone reverts back to the original way of working. Get good at implementing change. Organizations that help their people move from thinking and acting in existing ways to thinking and acting in new ways are the organizations that are going to beat their competition every single time. Building a change management competency is a clear competitive advantage. With PDGM, your operations will obviously be altered, so you have to inspect what you expect. You have to beta test, and if changes need to be made, do it quickly and communicate the why. Just because you're making changes to your change effort as you're going doesn't mean that it's failing. It just means you're tweaking your processes to ensure full adoption by your people. You just have to communicate why you're changing it. So where do we start? Uh, we get this question a lot. So we, we all know full well that change is constant. Organizations move between adjusting to changes that are imposed on them, much like PDGM, and shaping change for themselves, but in both instances, proper change management is a must. We have been here as an industry before, and while the change effort required by PDGM will absolutely be intense, it can be and will be accomplished with appropriate change management efforts. Those that are not prepared for PDGM are not prepared for the future. The evolution to PDGM will be easier for those that are equipped with a clear vision and roadmap for the next year and a strong commitment to leading the change alongside teams of committed change leaders. I really hope that this has been helpful. Um, I think at this time, we're gonna take um, and look and see what questions that have come in from our audience. Thank you, Carrie Jo. Thank you for providing us with the best practices for change management to prepare us for PDGM success. Uh, we do have some great questions that have come in. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first question is, which of the eight constants present the biggest challenge for organizations? Okay, uh, good question. So um, I think every organization is different, but if I had to pick one, it's probably gonna be constant number one, the it takes a village, um, the biggest challenge. It's always gonna be your people factors, right? That are gonna be the biggest hindrance to any change. If you really, if you can't mold and change the behaviors of those within your organization, then most change efforts that you try to accomplish are gonna struggle and fail. Thank you. Um, all right, next one is, there's been talks of PDGM being delayed. Do you think it will be? Good question. Um, you know, we here at Access are fully preparing for PDGM to be effective January 2020 is going to be delayed. This law was put into place by Congress. So the change now, I think, would um, be quite the feat. So no, we do not believe it will be delayed. So from a PDGM perspective, what change will be the most difficult for organizations to adapt to? So I think uh, to start, I think every aspect of your home health agency is going to need to be evaluated for PDGM. Um, but overall, I would say it's the it's the 30 day payment and how you know you guys ensure that maximum payments are being received. Um, you know we remind our teams internally a lot that PDGM is a change to our payment model. It's not a clinical change like the COPs were. So just reminding yourself that it's a payment change will help. Um, you know, operations are going to have to adopt to new ways of working to ensure maximum payments um, in that 30 day time slot are recognized. And I also have to men mention coding. We know it's going to be difficult to get your referral sources to submit all necessary information for proper coding with CDGM. So this will require extra work at intake as well as uh, potentially an education plan for your referral sources which that in of itself is a whole other change management effort that you'll have to think about. Oh, fantastic. And I know Access has a lot of resources available to help support those education plans. Yes, ma'am. Um, and we'll share that information at the end of the webinar where you can get that. So how do you go about creating buy-in to change uh, with a person or a team who refuses to get on board? Uh, well, first, don't let it take you, um, you know, set you back. Resistance is definitely inevitable. First, I would say you have to try and understand why that individual or group is resisting. Is it one of the, the reasons that we talked about um, in my slides? So is it a structural reason? Is it a personal reason? Is it a physiological reason? So identifying the reason for the resistance will help you put in place a plan to attack that. Um, but then once you've identified the reasoning, um, it's important too that you also involve that person or that team 
in the change effort, so they feel that sense of ownership and can really adopt to new ways of working. Okay, uh, we have just a few more questions, so thank you for taking this extra time with us today. Mm -hmm. uh, what role does change management play in an organization's culture? Man, well, if an organization can prove um, that they have a change management competency, it will directly impact um, your culture positively. So it's a clear competitive advantage that few organizations can really match. So, you know, it's, it's, it's undoubtedly extremely positive if you have that underlying um, ability to change. And also, if everyone in your, in, in your organization feels like they have a say in what's being changed and how it's being changed, that builds a culture of collaboration, innovation, trust, and really everyone becomes kind of an owner of the success of the business. Fantastic. Um, last question, how can we add in change management on top of everything else that we're doing? Yeah, so even just going through some of these slides, I know that change management and the effort that goes into it can seem daunting, and it really should if you're thinking about all of the aspects of it. Um, the good news is um, we have time. Um, CMS gave us, you know, an entire year to plan this out and get used to what's coming and do all the analysis that's needed. Um, you have to make sure that you don't ignore it and start planning now. Um, and while, you know, we talked about the pay me now, pay me later, it's going to be a lot of work up front, but it's important that you start that now. So where once we approach January 1st of 2020, um, you've already got everything in place and you are fully, um, you, you're fully aware of how it's going to impact your organization specifically. Great. Thank you. Uh, so that's all the time we have for questions today. Um, however, for those of you whose questions we were unable to get to, we will follow up with you after the webinar. Um, thanks again, Carrie Jo, for your expert knowledge in change management. You've uh, successfully prepared us all for the changes that are coming. Uh, so don't forget, um, we will provide everyone with a link to the slides and post a video recording of the webinar on access.com. If you'd like to join the thousands of agencies that are successfully using access, submit your name and contact information in the question box, and a member of our team will reach out to you today. Thank you again for joining us today as we deliver on our mission to empower healthcare organizations and professionals with the world's best technology solutions. Thank you for joining our on-demand training today and for choosing Access, a provider of innovative, cloud-based software, services, and solutions to help home health organizations improve patient care and grow their business. Access is the only healthcare technology company approved to award continuing education credits by the American Nurses Credentialing Center and is also the most recommended home health software on Software Advice. You can watch more on-demand training videos through our software or at access.com, where you can also find tutorials, blogs, white papers, and answers to frequently asked questions. Thanks again for choosing Access.